in the Aftorah of Shabbos Bekeitz, follows Hanukkah. We go straight from the last day of Hanukkah into Shabbos Bekeitz and the Aftorah. Obviously, there has to be a connection between the story of the Aftorah and the Pasha Bekeitz, and in this particular case, also Hanukkah. Easy to find it. The old saying that little good things come in little bundles, it's a little Haftorah, but what a powerful message. And related to the little bundles, to our Kinderlach. Well, let me tell, share first the story before I go ahead of myself. The Haftorah starts with Shlomo Melech wakes up and he realizes it was a dream. Although that doesn't tell us the dream, but we look earlier, the dream was where he's dreaming a 12-year-old king who just became king, is asking God for wisdom. And God grants him wisdom, and God grants him wealth, and grants him success. In the morning when Shlomo Melech wakes up, and he's able to understand the chirping, the language of the birds, he realized that it wasn't just a dream. His dream was fulfilled. He got this phenomenal wisdom. But then the Torah, the Baf Torah, I should say, goes on to tell this famous story where the two mothers, both of them claim that the living child is theirs. One child, unfortunately, passed away, and they're both claiming, this little child is mine. There's no proof. Shlomo Melech adjudicates in front of the court, and he says, bring me the child. Best solution would be to cut the child in half. Logic? We find in the Talmud the discussion. If two people come and claim ownership about a certain piece of cloth, a talis as it's called in the Gemara Lush, and we can't prove who it belongs to, so says the Mishnah, cut it in half, each gets half. Do the same thing with a child. And he has to bring a sword to do it. Mother panics, and she starts pleading, please give her the child as long as the child should stay alive. Where the other cold body says, Cut it in half, neither she or I will have. Say Shlomo Melech, the one who begged to keep the child alive, is the real mother. And then the sages, although at the beginning they were quite concerned about this 12-year-old king going with this kind of an approach, then they realized, they realized that this judgment is divinely inspired. Here is the connection between the Parsha. Yosef has to interpret dreams, receives dream, dreams, has to interpret dreams, and then far himself to say, this interpretation is Ruach Halakim, this is a godly inspiration. But what's the message to us? Chanukah means chinuch, education, and that's why we give Chanukah girl to the kids to teach them, to share, to give tzedakah with this money comes to Jewish education. We are the two mothers, the parents. What kind of education are we going to give our children? Are we, giving, are we going to give a wholesome living, assuring that the child should have continuous life? Keep the child one, keep the child intact, put the child on a living track, on a one track, or are we going to give the child a divided education, divided in terms of what are the priorities, what is important in life. Are we going to be consumed with giving this child all the morality, all the message of Hanukkah, the purity of the light, the ner mitzvah ve Torah or the purity of the oil, oil which represents the essence of Torah, the essence of our Judaism. Are we instilling in our children a love for the Jewish people? Are we instilling in our children the love for God and the love for the light, the love for the Bet Amikdash, the love for the purity of the oil which has the seal of the Kohen Gadol, sealing, sealed all the way, tracing back its origin from Aaron Cohen and prior to this? Or are we giving the child a, device, a divided education? other priorities. While Judaism is important, my child is other important 
And sometimes we even tell them, more important. How so? Because we devote so much more time and more money and more effort in the other parts of education, the job, so on and so forth. Comes the Pasha's Miketz. Miketz, which means redemption, which is connected to Hanukkah. Let's not look at our children as a piece of material good that can't be divided. It's a wholesome soul. It's a one living organ that cannot be divided, that must be given. First and foremost, a full, healthy, one direction, education. And by doing so, we realize that this is God's wisdom. This is the intelligence of Shlomo Melech, the wisest of all men. We want our children to be wise. Let's give them the proper education. By giving this education, there's no question that any second we will see the descendant of Shlomo Melech and David Melech, Mashiach with his, with us over here. Shabbat Shalom.